Now, when one designs in China, you know, how does one design a super tall building? Uh, and, of course, uh, one possibility was to, to think of it in traditional terms. Uh, another possibility is to think of it as, as something quite different from that. Uh, what we, in fact, did was to try to find a way of dealing with the basic dynamic of a tall building as that which was anchored into the earth and created a relationship between the earth and the sky. I mean, that's sort of the essence of the tall building. The dramatization of that particular fundamental issue of the relationship between earth and sky became somewhat of the, of the genesis for the building. Ancient Chinese uh, represented uh, in their burial tombs, uh, they represented the earth uh, with a square prism, and as you can see, the horizontal striations and, of dark stone, and the heavens they represented as a circular disk uh, of light stone. Uh, and so it occurred to us that the possibility of creating an extremely simple building, uh, because within this cacophony of 80 tall buildings, each of which had an entirely different architectural style with no regulation whatsoever, uh, the intention at this time was to be able to create the simplest possible building that created an abstract, a powerfully abstract relationship that hopefully was based on something that had a strong connection uh, to Chinese history without resorting to uh, any sort of pagoda designs. So um, that brought about then the transformation of the, what, as at the top you can see the, um, up on top here you can see the uh, square prism, uh, and that's, uh, I did it again, uh, that square prism was interacted by a series of sort of cosmic arcs. And the carving of the, those, that uh, prism uh, into uh, the form you see at the bottom uh, was the, the, the basic idea behind the building itself. So when we talk about the building being a relationship between the circle and the square, uh, it is really the diagram on the right-hand side. Those are the circles. That is the circle, this cosmic arc cutting through the building that would form the, the genesis of the building. Uh, it's, it, you'll see why there's a confusion as to what the, the issue of the circle really uh, is. It, it, after I show you a couple more slides, but what this shape does is generate two different, fundamentally two different types of floor plates. One is basically a square, which is ideal for office space, and the other is basically sort of a lozenge shape, which is ideal for hotel space. And the, we have two fundamental programmatic components. We have a hotel at the top, we have at the base of it uh, office structure. There are many other uh, components as well, but those are the two fundamental driving geometries. Uh, so uh, this uh, building was presented to the Chinese authorities uh, in 1993, I believe, Josh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and at that pre particular presentation, there were 14 professors of architecture, each of whom had one half hour to respond to my 10-minute presentation. Uh, and uh, the, it went from, it went from uh, Chinese to Japanese to English, so my uh, ability to, to, to really get the essence of the criticism was somewhat diminished, but nevertheless, um, we pre the first presentation, I thought it was going to get this all off to a great start. The, uh, there was a wonderful elderly woman that had a beautiful smile on her face, and uh, she got up and she looked at, uh, out at me and she said in English, and these were the only words that were spoken in English that day, she said, well, perhaps this building is acceptable, but it certainly isn't desirable. <laughs> and then it sort of went from, from bad to worse. And, and, uh, but we never really got a synopsis of the criticism that day, uh, but uh, it, it arrived uh, via the Hong Kong uh, newspapers uh, a while later. Uh, the translation of the building from square to, to line on the top from the heaviness of the earth to the lightness in the sky is best illustrated by this diagram which shows all of the transformations of the floor plates. There was a need for an aperture on the top of the building uh, and the aperture that seemed to be most successful was a, a circular aperture. Uh, all of that linked very nicely, we, I believed, into in, in a, to the uh, moon gates that are regularly present in Chinese gardens uh, and um, all of the critiques, uh, critics of the building saw this. They saw the Japanese flag, uh, which uh, for a building that is to be the tallest building in China, 
uh, did, it didn't get things off to a good start. So it, 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 I understood after all of that what the criticism was about. Um, I went to, for an emergency meeting with Mr. Mori and the mayor of Shanghai in Tokyo for a one-hour meeting, and I suggested placing a bridge across the circle as sort of the symbolizing the joining together of two sides. And uh, I received this wonderful letter. There's actually a gold seal on the bottom, which we, we should have uh, emphasized here. But nevertheless, uh, in great appreciation for having uh, sort of dealt this Henry Kissinger-like uh, contribution to, to the, the, the dialogue between two countries. Uh, but that didn't necessarily last that long. The idea behind the circle was to try to create a solid void relationship between the Oriental Pearl TB Tower and our tower, which we turned in direct uh, axial relationship with the Oriental Pearl TB Tower. Um, and at the top, uh, referring back to Mr. B uh, Maury's P.T. Barnum days, uh, placing a gondola ride that went around that uh, circle itself uh, and that whole inverted cone out at the base there is a, is a queuing device, much like the Guggenheim Museum, uh, but everybody waiting to get onto the gondola. Uh, so uh, uh, that uh, probably would have been a dramatic uh, uh, entity, and we did, went a long way with the structural design of this. Les Robertson did, and, and we did complete designs for it, but um, it, it was ill-fated, as I'll show you later. One of Mr. Morey's fundamental uh, intentions with the tall building is to make it a civic entity. He did it in Tokyo, he's doing it, he did it in Shanghai. In other words, if the top of the building can be something that is, is for everybody, uh, for him then the building becomes not just a representation of the private enterprise, but it becomes something that is a civic symbol. Uh, and uh, we couldn't uh, agree more. Uh, the um, building with the circular form uh, ultimately uh, met with re uh, t great resistance, uh, particularly uh, after the internet started to become uh, a means of expressing one's opinion, uh, and the, the relationship of the circle uh, uh, to, uh, to the, the place uh, was uh, really perceived as unacceptable. And so uh, what we ultimately did is translated it into a, a, a form probably more natural to the geometry of the building, all of this up above here is space where one uh, observation space, one can come up and take a bridge across the top, which I'll show you a photograph of. On the top of the hotel, which is, is down in here, uh, there's a three-story stack of, of uh, dining facilities that's called Club 100, uh, or Century 100, excuse me, and it is an uh, incredible uh, a series of rooms. And I can say that because the entire Park Hyatt Hotel, which is in the blue, uh, was designed by Tony Chi, who is an architect here in, in uh, New York, and is perhaps one of the most beautiful hotels that uh, I've certainly encountered any place in the world. Uh, and it is a place of tremendous energy. I've, and then at the top, this is that uh, three-story stack of restaurants that I told you about, which is constantly filled and impossible to get a table at. Uh, uh, this is the entrance then to the observation, and. Uh, that is, all of this is queuing for tour buses and all of that. Uh, if one goes in and experiences this type of world, and the very top has a bridge with a glass floor which looks down uh, to the city below.